We want to thank you once again, Lord, for every good things that you have done in our life. We want to thank you once again for your faithfulness throughout this day and bringing us back at this blessed evening to have a fellowship with you and with one another. At this moment, I do pray for all the participants who will be taking part at this program. May you be with them so that every word that comes from the mouth, every song that they sung, every prayer that they offer will be a blessing to each one of us. As we continue in worshiping you, we invite your Holy Spirit to be in the midst of us. We commit our life and the rest of this worship hour under mighty hand, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I'll read out the resolutions. NBCC 23rd Triennial and 87th Annual Gathering 2024 at Simi Baptist Akukuhu, Newland. Gratitude. NBCC family at the outset extends its utmost gratitude to God for His grace through which its triennial and annual gathering began well and concluded or concluding with a deep sense of fulfillment. We also express our sincere gratitude to both the host association, WSBAK, and the host church, SBAN, for the generosity and warm hospi hospitality extended to the NBCC staff, executive members, and all the delegates. Our heartfelt gratitude also goes out to all program officials for their incredible contributions towards a fruitful triennial and annual gathering 2024. Resolutions. One, we resolve to experience God together by facilitating our church members to take the Bible as the sole authority of our faith and practice and a means to encounter Christ both corporately and individually. Two, while maintaining our distinct identity by preserving our cultural values and practices, we resolve to put our biblical faith above the emerging trends, both in the church and society. Number three, while respecting all religious faiths and communities, we resolve to stand firm in defense of our faith in Jesus Christ, the resurrected savior of the world. Number four, as a body of Christ, we resolve to reaffirm our love for God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and inculcate interdependence on one another with godly love in ministry, outreach, and social relationship so as to navigate the Church of Christ towards the future. Five, as the body of Christ, we resolve to be inclusive by engaging differently abled people in fellowship, worship, and witness. Submitted by Dr. Niholi Sema, Reverend Matiutai Gonmei, and Sicho. I now hand over this to our president for approval of the house. Thank you, the resolution committee. Is there anybody who would like to uh, raise questions or clarify the resolution? If not, I will, we will go for acceptance if there are no questions. As a sign of our acceptance and our commitment to follow and to abide, uh, to follow these resolutions, I would like all of you to stand up for a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, 
here we are standing before you as a sign of our acceptance and approval of the resolutions that have just been read. In our own power, we cannot do anything. And so, Lord, we ask of your grace upon each of us that as we carry the peace of our experience here at Newland back to our home, families, and our associations. We pray that, Lord, you will help us that we may be able, O oh God, to uphold the resolutions. And we pray that, Lord, you will continue to lead us. And it's my prayer for NBCC, Lord, that you will go before us to lead NBCC. It's my prayer for NBCC, Lord, that you will be with us to sustain NBCC. It's my prayer for NBCC that you will be behind us to guard us. And it's my prayer for NBCC, Lord, that you will be beneath us to uphold us and be above us to bless us. Because NBCC without you cannot do anything, but with you, Lord, we can make a difference and impact the world and our society. And it's also my prayer, O oh God, for NBCC that you will take us to a higher plane that we can experience things that we have not experienced before and help us, O oh God, to fellowship with you deeper, with you and with one another. And so, Lord, we lay before you these resolutions and we pray that, Lord, you will help us that in doing and in following this and in fulfilling this, your name will be lifted higher than ever before. And so, Lord, we commit everything, our resolution, and we pray for your grace that we may be able to do this. And we pray this with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen.
আমি খান তো গানা করব কলে তো এনেকা বা পড়া করে না করব কলে তো চুপচাপ পড়া বহি থাকে কি মিশা কব এতে বেশি বার খারা করে কিনে এই বার ইয়ে কি নিমিতে খারা করে আছে না জানি কিনে খারা করে আছে হলে বি মিথুন লাগা মন ছবি খাইছে গাহরি লাগা মন ছবি খাইছে লোকাল নদী লাগা মাছ বি খাইছে নিমখ বি খাইছে আর কি কি বি খাই কিনে পেট বি খুলে কিনে থাকে আছে আর এই মান নহয় কিনে খা লাগা খান তো নিচে দে মান নহয় কিনে উপরতে বি যাই কিনে কি নিমিতে ইয়েতে বহি আছে না জানি কিনে থাকে আছে বাট আই স্পিক দ্যাট অন বিহাফ অফ মাই ইয়ঙ্গার ব্রাদার এস ওয়েল রিভ্রেন রুমাথ NBCC is a big family. The ministry is challenging and diverse. We have departments like finance and property. We have a department like women, youth, Christian education. And a one thriving department is Nagaland Missions Movement Department. This evening, as I stand here, I am here to say that we are bidding farewell to our Secretary, Reverend Andrew Sam, Secretary of Nagaland Baptist Church Council Missions Department. He was, for all these years, the most senior among us. And to think about or even say that he is living, we feel that the big bone in our makeup is going away. But this is ministry. Today you are here, tomorrow you don't know where God will transplant you. And that has happened to Reverend Andrew Sam. He has served the department the council for two terms successfully, 10 years. And when we say 10 years, it's a decade, and we think that it is long. But as uh, we look back of the time that uh, we have had together, I should say we have enjoyed we have a good time of uh, interactions. We have learned from each other. We have also de-learned from each other. And ministry has taken us this far. The end of our last year, we started talking about, this is going to be your last time with us. This is going to be your last meeting with us. This is going to be your last meal with us. This is going to be your last journey with us. You know, how many last have we said? Today I'm saying that, uh, you know, this moment is going to be cherished because we are saying, go well. Go well, brother. And be where God is going to once again transplant you and be successful. I know 
we will still continue to wrap our shoulders together in the ministry of our Lord. That is, if our Lord Jesus Christ delayed his coming, until then we will be serving together. We say the general secretary's note. What note can I give? When the note is right with us. Because his life, his ministry, his dedication, his commitment is the note that we have seen. And uh, we will continue to read. But I cannot forget, and I know he cannot forget as well, the final note, the time that we have had in Bangkok. The evening where we went around, nicely showered, put on shorts, and then uh, a t-shirt, and then uh, we went around looking for food. We thought we will find a restaurant like restaurants in Jornapani, but there was no Jornapani there. We enter into one, finish a bowl of... Uh, noodles with a chicken. Then we said, that's not enough. Then we enter into another one, ordered fried rice and noodles, and then uh, put over it the beef and then a chicken, and then soup, plenty of soup, uh, because uh, we did not have enough money. So I said, pour more soup, pour more soup. <laughs> aru dalibi, aru dalibi. Uh, uh. Then finally, after hakum kap, we started finishing that third plate. And we found out again that our stomach needed some more. <laughs> then uh, we went into uh, another place, bought fried chicken and then sticky rice, and then we thought we'll take home, but we said to each other, why should we take home? Let's finish it here. <laughs> we finished. And then uh, we thought about the night, the long night. Let us buy again. Yeah. <laughs> we bought. You remember, I, I think it was five or six packets of uh, chicken, fried chicken, plus uh, sticky rice. And then uh, um, this uh, uh, good, uh, uh, good coconut uh, water. And then we head home to our hotel rooms. And we said, let us finish again. <laughs> again, we finish. And then, what's next? I went on to my bed and I said, now, UFC. <laughs> Many of you, I don't know whether you know what is UFC or not. Ultimate fighting something, uh, champion, yeah. Stomach as big as uh, Saramati, yeah. not able to move, yet enjoying the fight, the kick. And then finally, we both snore away to glory. Uh, that's the final note. You should never forget you should never forget. We'll be missing you, but uh, uh, we are sure that uh, God is going to use you, transplant you in the right place once again so that you can be effective. That's my final note. And my farewell speech on behalf of the NBCC staff, especially the cabinet, with whom you have rubbed your shoulders for the past many years. And we rejoice seeing that you have done well. And over and above that, God, Christ, your Savior, will one day say, faithful servant, you have done well. And that we all await one day.
along with the, funer uh, the, uh, the farewell uh, uh, moment, we also welcome our new incoming, our incoming secretary, Reverend Lipok. We believe, every one of us believe that God has brought him in the right time. And we look forward to the years that God is going to use you in the ministry of NBCC in the Department of Missions. Missions, sending missionaries, generating the needed funds, all those are not new to you. You are bringing in your experience that you have walked, you have gone through, and we are confident that your new family that you are going to be entering into will uh, rejoice with you. So we welcome him as well. It will be incomplete to say, if I let the NBCC officials go away without saying anything of the time that we have had the last three years. The president, the two vice president, your tenure was very, very short because it was just trial to trial. But I have seen sincerity in all of you, all of you, that is, not only from my heart, but from the heart of the cabinet and also the executive members as well. None of you have ever missed the EC meetings. Far or near, you are always there. And you have shouldered much of the responsibility. And in doing that, you have given us the confidence to go on. Me, as the General Secretary, my colleagues as secretaries, coordinators, and office staff as well. So, we say thank you to you. A time of presentation will be a little bit later because we are still in the 20 third trinal and 87th annual. But we want to pray for you as well. And as we pray, our gratitude goes out to you and we thank God for your lives. The incoming, the new incoming officials, yesterday we have voted and they are going to be leading us once again from end of a trial to another trial 2024 to 2027 when you stand and when you lead some of us will not be in the ministry of NBCC but we know that now NBCC ministry is in safe hand to be led by Reverend Dr. Mar Pongner and his two colleagues. We also want to invite them as well to come over here so that our former General Secretary, Reverend Jabu Teresa, can bless all of you, the incoming and the outgoing, along with that, the staff of NBCC. The cabinet will come and stand together with others, and then the staff, wherever you are, you will stand, and, uh, and Reverend Jabu Teraja will bless us. So may I call the officials, the outgoing officials, and the incoming officials that we have 
nominated and accepted yesterday the outgoing officials, uh, the, an outgoing NMM secretary and also the incoming secretary to come over here and let Reverend Jabu Tereja pray for us. After that, I will give time, I will take time again. The NBCC cabinet. Then the staff, wherever you are, can you stand? It is a joy for me to come here again 15 years after my exit from the NBC office and uh, we're grateful to God for his leading hand upon this council and for the staff standing here out of many people many lax people under NBCC you have been chosen to be in the place where you are. And so being called out of many people, it is a very special privilege to work in the service of the Lord. However, along with this privilege, there is an intimidating warning also. Jeremiah 48 verse 10 says, Cursed is the one who works for the Lord with selectness. And therefore, it is very important that we must work with all austerity and uh, in reverence. The outgoing president and his team, and also Reverend Andrew said, <clears throat> I thank God and I salute, congratulate you also for the efficiency your leadership has exhibited during your tenure of office. You have pulled and pushed the council through many challenges and it is all the, the Lord's doing. And therefore, all our gratitude is due to God. To the incoming officers, the challenges before us is great, all the time great. And God demands from you, not less than what other people, other have got, uh, done in the past. Therefore, may God continue to lead you, bless you. And perhaps I shall request the executive member also to rise up on your feet, all the executive secretaries of the different associations. <clears throat> because this is the team that works for the council. Let us look to God in prayer. Gracious our Heavenly Father, who gives all the perfect gifts for our joy, hallowed be your name to our praise, our worship, and our righteous living. May your kingdom come by our pursuit of justice and sharing of love. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven by our obedience to your command to go into all the world and make people of your disciples. We thank you for NBCC 
a family which you love so dearly, a family you care so much, and a family which you have faithfully showered grace upon her. Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the officers who are leaving their office from today. We thank you for the grace that you have endowed upon them. And by their leadership, you have guided the council thus far. We pray that you will continue to use them in whatever capacity they, will going, they are going to serve. May your grace continue to be upon them. And Lord, I pray also for those who are coming in. Pray that your grace, your wisdom will rest upon them. I pray that you grant them the spirit of discernment so that in every situation, in every circumstances, with that spirit of discernment, they will decide what is best for the council. I pray that you will grant them the spirit of unity, the spirit of one accord, so that they will walk together in unity and take the counsel further on and pray that as Timothy, Paul admonished Timothy, may they also with grace received from you fulfill the ministry that they are entrusted with. May you bless their families I pray for good health upon them so that no illness will deter them from fulfilling their ministry. I pray for grace upon all these who will be continue working for you, both the NBCC officers, the staff, the executive secretaries of various associations. Pray that through this family, this core group, the family of NBCC will take further step to give you glory and to bring glory to your name. And through their leadership, all the Baptist churches under NBCC will continue to thrive on spiritually. Thank you for hearing our prayers. May your favor continue to rest upon all these, your, your servants. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> On behalf of uh, the Nagaland Baptist Church Council, we would like to accord Reverend uh, Andrew with an appreciation, a, a certificate to say that uh, we are truly thankful to you. And as a mark of that, we will uh, present uh, to him on our behalf a certificate of commendation. And after that, uh, as uh, he stands here, associations that are will ready to say thank you with any gift that you have brought for him, you can just come one after the other. I'm not going to call association-wise. You can do that after the commendation is 
handed over to him. And right after that, I will uh, give him not more than three minutes. Okay. To show his face, his smile, and as he is done, the incoming secretary uh, as well, uh, Reverend uh, Lipok, to come and express himself in two or three minutes. So when I say two or three minutes, I'm expecting only two minutes. Certificate. Certificate of Commendation. The Nagaland Baptist Church Council is pleased to place on record its deep appreciation for to, Re, to Reverend Andrew Sam for rendering to the building of the kingdom of God through the life and ministry of the Nagaland Baptist Church Council from 2014 to 2024 in the capacity of Secretary NMM and Executive Committee Member of the Council. A faithful servant of God, we shall remember you always with fond memories of the fellowship and friendship we shared together. May God continue to bless you to be his worthy ambassadors, touching the lives of many to experience the faithfulness of life in Jesus Christ. Signed, Reverend Dr. Zelhuke Ho, General Secretary. Signed, Reverend Dr. V. Atsi Dolye, President. Nagaland Baptist Church Council. And uh, the associations, if you are ready now, you can uh, take your time. Thank you for the honor, though uh, I don't deserve it. As I plan to leave, I thought I will also give uh, my closing note, as our GS gave her, I mean his closing note. I think it was some uh, four or five years back, we were together in Indonesia. And I thought I was the, one, the only one who was uh, walking out of the conference to find something else. When I moved out, I could see our GS walking ahead of me. And I was just wondering where he was going. 
I tried to catch him up. Then we landed up in one restaurant that was selling the innards of uh, beef, you see. And there was quite a special one. Then we, I ordered one, thinking that uh, we can share that together. And the plate was full with uh, big intestines, and I thought that would be good enough for both of us. But when I took it to the table, he said, why not we get another one? <laughs> well, I have uh, still many things to add to that, but in order to save time, I will just uh, end out my note in that. Thank you once again to Nagaland Baptist Church Council for giving me the opportunity to serve in the capacity as the Secretary of Nagaland Missions Movement. I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, working with the team that is in place, the cooperation, and the teamwork that we enjoyed is something that uh, really uh, helped me to see the ministry in a very different perspective. Before uh, joining Nagaland Missions Movement, when way back, some years back, I tried to engage myself in different areas. I was a night together in a government office, then to a missionary, then to a school teacher, to a headmaster, to a pastor, then to the ministry. In the course of all these uh, works that I've gone through, it has helped me, shaped me, both in my spiritual life, as well as in my way of doing things. I want to say thank you to our General Secretary for being there always, giving a patient listening to the things that we want to share with him, encouraging us, challenging us, and also to my colleague cabinet staff, for pushing me and also uh, pulling my hands when I need to be. And I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, working with all of you. To the executive uh, committee, we bring different programs and plans to the executive for deliberations. And you always give us gave us a very positive, positive uh, support in taking the Ministry of Nagaland Missions Movement and NBCC as well. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your support. And before I end, I also want to thank the churches. All of you know that Nagaland Missions Movement depends on the prayer offerings on the first Sunday of May. Many of the churches honestly and uh, truthfully organized that and followed that, but I know many churches don't bother about that. Still then, when I came in, the offerings that comes uh, was around uh, 40, 50, 60, but because of your support, now it has uh, gone to even one CR, and we are thankful to, to God for that. Not only that, there are many lifetime mission partners who are contributing yearly rupees 1,000 to 15,000. And not only that, we have well-wishers who came in with different amounts every now and then. And that is how the Ministry of Nagaland Missions Movement uh, goes on. 
And it is all because of your support. It is all because of your uh, sacrifices that we take on the ministry. And I just want to make a special mention of the Council of Rangma Baptist Churches. When I joined NMM, the following year, NMM, uh, CRBC came forward to support in my salary. And I want to thank uh, the Council of Rangma Baptist Churches, the leadership, the church members, the pastors for their support. And it is because of their support that I was encouraged to do my best and thank God for the support. This evening, my family, my wife and my family could not be here because of my children's exam. But I want to thank my wife, my children for their love and their support for, I mean, in this uh, ministry journey. It's all because of their sacrifices that I was able to uh, move around and do whatever I can, though the least. Over and above that, I also want to say thank you to our living God. It is all because of Him and Him alone. It is not because of what we are, what I am, but it is all because of uh, who He is. May all the glory and honor be to our living God. Thank you once again for your support, your prayers, and as the new secretary comes in and take up the leadership, I strongly believe and pray that the churches will continue to support him and also continue to pray and work and walk alongside him so that he may be able to take on the ministry of Nagaland Baptist Church Council for his glory. I know I was given three minutes, but Three minutes, in three minutes, I'm not able to concise myself. But thank you once again. God bless you, and God bless Nagaland Baptist Church Council. Respected NBCC officers, our spiritual leader, Reverend Dr. Kiho, and his team, the EC members, and all the Christian leaders gathered here. I'm greatly humbled and yet highly honored to be chosen by the NPCC family to serve us NPCC. Mission Secretary. All glory and honor be to our God. From the core of my heart, I want to thank the search committee and all NPCC family for giving me this privilege to serve under this capacity. I promise to give my best. My sincere thanks goes to our Executive Secretary, Reverend Dr. Mar, my leaders, my wife, my family members for mentoring me for what I am today. I strongly believe that this position brings me not only privilege, but also a greater responsibility. I will continue to instill discipline and complete faithfulness to God. We also must acknowledge our gratitude to our past leaders who have played the role in making NPCC what it is now. 
I must especially appreciate Reverend Andrew Gim, Reverend Andrew Sim, for the ministry well done. May God continue to bless you, my leader and my friend. And yet, this is not over. The mission of God must continue. The mission of God must continue. Our leaders have dreamed of sending out 10,000 missionaries. Can we not dream to send out missionaries to all the countries of this world and beyond? Our leaders have managed to establish NCF in different parts of India. Is it not time for us to make them full-fledged churches and empower them to reach the unrich in the cities. Today we are witnessing great revival of all the major religions of this world. The jihadist movement, the Hindutva movement, like the Karwapsi, etc. And very sadly, we are also witnessing the rise of Christian nominalism. Yes, the challenges before us are many. But with the power of our God, we must find ways to fulfill God's commission. We really cannot afford to serve alone. Christianity is designed by God to work in partnership. Christianity is designed by God to work in partnership. All the associations, the mission agencies that we have, the local churches, regardless of denominations, must come together to fulfill our God's commission. As our GS rightly pointed out, we must be Nagas. We must get out. We must go out from our standardized church. Come, let us serve together in obedience to our God. May God continue to bless NPCC. Thank you.
This evening, the reading is taken from OT section, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4, 5, and 6. I will be reading from Jeme dialect. Israel, I then Nsunu, Rampobe, Na Rampobe, Ze Rene, Nui Tingwang, Rampobe, Nui Tingwang, Ze Nui Nlongpe, Kine. Nui Keringia Pekine, Na Nui Ken King Pekine Teu Kunglu. Madaude i Nui, i Henai Nui Ze Kepu Samdung De Nsung Tadiso. This is the word of the Lord. New Testament, reading from Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. I'll be reading in semi dialect. Verse 5. Christo jisu kukumsu wala kiki no ngu shilukeno. He no no ngolo alo. Verse 6. Paye alho laya khapu aplahi alho kem shima sa kiushi kumsu moe. Verse 7. Ike mupa ampiu besu kumsa shive aka hel haye pe puveno. Timi kim hishi puno, verse 8. Eno timi lhaya kim hishi no, pa ambiu kuchunupe akiti, tie cross lo kiti, kutono awokulu shive, verse 9. Tirenguna alho no, chukup raikyu alo, pa iki kebuzu, ajikum sunguna aki keujepesu, patsu, verse 10. Ike mu kungu ga eno ayiri lo ngo. Ayiri ko aki uke mtsuno jisuje kuke lo kukunye no msanani. Verse 11. Eno apu alho jekipi pushie 
kum suki chilono jisu kristo ye ambiu kepi pe penani amen We all will agree if I say that uh, this uh, trial and uh, annual, we have been blessed much. Blessed in so many ways, in our fellowship, in our interaction, and blessed in the Word. We are thankful to our speakers for bringing us uh, blessings so that uh, we can uh, continue to think about our theme, experiencing God together. Tonight, our speaker is Mrs. Nini Bengdang. She has been involved in uh, MBCC ministries in different ways. Departments have uh, used her in ministering to people in the programs. The office of you, sir, to minister to us. And we thought that God will have a message for us through her tonight. And uh, we have invited her to be one of the main speaker. Nini Bandang is the women pastor of City Church. Prior to joining the ministry of a pastoral, pastoral ministry, she has served in different capacities and uh, uh, hold uh, different uh, responsibilities in the NGOs and also faith-based uh, Christian organization. Tonight, as she comes, I pray that uh, God will uh, minister to us, experiencing God together in relationship. She is a mother, mother of two, and she and her husband served the Lord together. Nini, would you come and take the time? Thank you, sir, for that introduction. And uh, before I start, I would also want to extend my gratitude to NBCC for this privilege. Um, I thank NBCC for, you know, affirming God's call in our lives, and especially this evening in my life. Uh, it has the, the very fact that you have entrusted me with this task has really deepened my commitment with God. And uh, above everything else, I'm really grateful to God. I know we all serve full time, no matter where we are, we serve full time to our God. But I thank God that he has called me to serve him in this capacity. And so with this, I would just want to start with our uh, meditation this evening. Okay. The topic that was given to me was experiencing God together in relationship. When, you know, um, I was about to come here and then the NBCC people, they called me and they said, you know, that they have arranged a, roof, a room for me with another roommate. I was very apprehensive and I was like, I also asked questions and I asked them, who is she? How is she? Can we, you know, be able to do life together, you know, even if it's for two or three days? And we know that, you know, uh, Rather than having a relationship with people on Facebook, it, must, it can be for a year, but 
to spend an evening with a real person, you know, for a night is also you know, something very different. And so I was also sent pictures of her and said, this is how she looks, this is who she is, and all that. And then I came to realize that, you know, she also asked so many people about me. And she's like, okay, she's going to be my roommate. How is she? And all that. And so this morning we sat down and then she had a lot of presumption. I had a lot and we were so apprehensive, you know. And so that is what relationship is all about. It's messy. It's not easy to, you know, to, to be, you know, to just start any relationship with one another. So with no context, we just asked each other and we had a good time. And so we went and then we exchanged phone numbers and now we'll be going to Dimapur together, you know? And so this is how, you know, everything has happened. Now, when we look at the Bible, we begin to see that our God is a relational God. Our God has all, always been in a relationship. When we look at the Bible, we, Genesis 1, we look at it and we know that there, there was a community that already existed before creation and if i can call that the kingdom of god i want to call that the kingdom of god because there we're in a relationship there was a community of people of a, of, of, of a, i mean like there was relationship happening and that we call the trinity but that we did not understand much it is only in the light of new testament that it, we understand that there are three in one but they already existed, and this kingdom of God existed in eternity. It is forever. So when people say it is only during the coming of Jesus that kingdom of God was launched, I think in a way it is not very true. The kingdom of God existed eternally before creation. And this relationship that they had was so wonderful. It was a relationship of love. It was a relationship of self-giving love. They loved one another. And in that, what do they mean? It was self-giving in the sense they did not focus on themselves, but they focused on the other person. So they glorified one another. They admired one another. They found joy in that fellowship. It was a perfect relationship. They were not subordinate to one another. And Dallas Willard said, they're not subordinate to one another because of this or because of that. No, in that relationship of love, they had no room for subordinates. They were one. And that is why we say, God is one. God is love. God is united. And God was in a relation. And continues to be in that relationship. Now, God being in that relationship, some people might say, then why did God create man? If he's in a perfect relationship, why does he, why did he create man? Did he create us so that, you know, they lacked something? No. But they wanted to give us, to spread the joy. They wanted to extend it, uh, that fellowship to human beings, and they created us in the image of God. And so when we look at Genesis, we know that we were designed to be together. We were designed to be together. For God said, it is not good for a man to be alone. Because God himself is not, you know, they're not alone. They're not isolated. They're not alienated. They are one and they're in a perfect relationship. And so Adam and Eve, they had perfect relationships. So when Adam saw Eve, he burst out into a song and said, flesh of my flesh and bones of my bones. They had perfect relationship. There was no subordinate. They were created in the image of God. And this relationship existed. Now, when we look at the Garden of Eden, we begin to see that God walked with men. God talked with them. They had a relationship. They knew each other. And so relationship existed in eternity. And that was extended to men. 
But we all know the fall happened. And because of the fall, men were alienated from God. But even in that and strange relationship, isn't it amazing that God being self-giving, God being, a, you know, self-giving and God being so loving, he just could not leave men there. And so we see Genesis account and we see God spoke to men in Genesis. God still went in search of men to be in, to be in relationship with men. So when Abraham and all these people meet God, they always build an altar and they worship God. God talked to them. Now, when we look in the old, again in the Old Testament as the passage that has been read, that was the central life of a Jewish, of a Jewish man. That was the central thing. Everything about daily life was structured around that Shema. We call it the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, and with all your strength. At the, it, 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 the, the, the love for God was at the center of everything, that every daily, ordinary things that they do, it's centered around the fact that it was to love God. Now, what does this mean? It means to say that they, when they, when they say the Shema, what they're doing is they take the yoke of the kingdom of God upon themselves. And they uphold the kingdom of God in the midst of all this pagan religion. And they say, hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. And so the whole of life surrounds around loving the Lord your God with all your heart. And that was Jewish. That was how they worshipped God. That was how they saw God. Now, it was only given to God. Now, when we go to the passage that was read to us in Philippians, we begin to see that here, when we talk about Jesus, what is Philippians 2, 5 to 11 saying? It is saying that this man that you call Jesus, he is God. This is the incarnation theology. This is God. He's saying this man is is God. Jews will only worship God. No one but only God. And now he's saying, this, this man that you say, Jesus is God. Now we all look at Paul and we know that he, he was someone who persecuted the church. Why did he persecute the church? Because he thought it was blasphemy to worship God. To, to, for a man to die at the cross and to call him God was a blasphemy. Paul, all his life, a devout Jew, lived by this Shema, I love, hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. He lived by that. And so in the, in the light of that, in the context of that, to call a man God was impossible. That was blasphemy. And it was in the light of that that Paul persecuted the church. But in the middle of this, Paul now says that this man is God. In Colossians, he says, in him, the full deity lives in bodily form. It means to say that God, that Jesus is God. And he came about here. Now again with this, I want to go back to, again, to the Old Testament. Now in the Old Testament, when you begin to see, like I said, God always wanted to be in that relationship with men. So after the Exodus, what happened? God said, build a tent. I want to be in your midst. I want to live with my people. And so God gave directions and a tent was built and God dwelt there with men. God desired to be in a relationship with men. So we see this 
temple thing coming in. And, and later we see that it was in the, the Solomon who built the temple. God resided in that temple. God dwelt with the people. God dwelt with his people. So we see that God longing to be with his people. So God was a relational God. God was a God of love. He was self-giving. He is God. And yet, he wanted to live with his people, us. And therefore, the temple always signified the presence of God. That was God having a relationship with us. And that is why when we come to church, what, what do, why do we come to church? Because we want to experience God. And therefore, temple was always there, whereby they had a relationship. But we know that after the exile, everything, the glory of God left, and God was silent for a very long time. God was silent for a very, very long time. But he spoke through the prophets. And this was the prophecy that the Messiah will come in bodily form. And you will see and behold his glory. That was the promise of God, that God will come. So when we look at the New Testament, the gospel, John, you know, or the, the gospel writer, you know, uh, I'm getting lost. Yeah, but John writes this and John says, how does he start his letter? You see, in the beginning was the Lord word the word was with god and the word was god and he tabernacled amongst us and we beheld his glory and that is why in the light of all this we see that jesus is god he is god and he became man he became one of us so that in and through him we can be reconciled back to that to god so that we are so that we can have this relationship with god and therefore when now paul worships jesus he sees jesus in that trinity he's able to identify and he's not putting jesus into the trinity just to make you know, just to make him understand and say, okay, all the while I've been worshiping this, so let me just put, it, put Jesus here. And no, through the scriptures and through God's revelation, he found Jesus in that relation. He, he, he found Jesus as God, that he is God, that being God, he became a man. And here, here we find this in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. And what does it say? It says, in your relationships with one another, have the mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. God, the creator of this world. We don't know at what heights, you know, he lives. We don't know. But he came down. He came down. And I always say this. If I'm asked to come down and God gives me this and say, Nini, I want you to be an ant. At least among the ants, I would want to be the leader. Because I know the way, I would want to show them the way. And I would say, okay, but at least let me be a leader. So you can at least see this, all these heavenly beings in line. We don't know. And yet God became he, lower and lower and lower and lower. And he became a man. And God did not even, you know, and, he, he, and if he was the leader of all mankind, that we also understand. But no. The word of God says that he even went lower, taking the form of a servant. And we are talking about a God becoming man. 
becoming obedient unto death. All the privileges that he had of being a God, he stripped it off. Everything he stripped it off. Nothing to take advantage of it. But all the responsibilities that came along, he fulfilled all of them. And therefore, the posture of humility is obedience. Obedience unto death, even death on a cross. God became man. He became a servant. He became obedient unto death and died the worst death. And in the middle of this, you know, if you look at the um, preceding uh, verses of, this, uh, of, the, of the ones that we have read, so if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love being one in spirit and of one mind. Do, uh, uh, of, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. The very word that says, that negative word that says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, tells us that in our very nature, this is how we go about, go about doing things. We do things for ourselves, but in the light of this, when we come, when God calls us, his call for us to live in that relationship, to love one another, He's not bringing a principle. He's bringing a person. God, man, imitate him. He set the example before us. It's not like saying, It was not an order. It was a life that he lived himself and he said, Now, go and do likewise. And therefore, our posture in our relationship to one another, a relationship with one another, it has to do with humility. And why? Because God himself became a man, and not only a man, but a servant. And he brought, it was death on the cross, and therefore he stands as an example before us. He is God and we worship him. And so it is, it is here in the, in the light of this, when you read the preceding verses that I've just read, you know the verses that I've just read, God here, Paul is calling the Christians to be united. To be united. To have the same mind. To be like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Why? So that there is unity amongst us. The call is for unity. That we need to be united. And how can we be united? It is being like Jesus Christ who gave up all his privileges but fulfilled all his responsibilities. And he calls us to that place to serve one another. And he stands as an example as to why we should pursue doing this. So he calls for unity, like I said, and unity can only be achieved when we are humble. 
So the, the, the way that we look at that superficial unity can come about by just acting out and living it out and, you know, just being good to one another, cordial to one another. But God is not talking about that unity. He's talking about a unity whereby we find it in Christ. Since, it, we are, since Christ stands as an example because of what Christ has done, it, we do it in the name of Christ. Because it is Christ who told us to love one another. And therefore, it is in the light of that that we seek unity. And this is going to be so messy because all of us here seated, all of us, even us seated here, we all want privileges. We all want recognition for the things that we do. We all want that. And when we do that, when we seek our privileges, when we, when we you know, seek for, to, to, to have our rights, when we focus on rights, there can be no unity. But real unity comes about when we give it, just like Christ here has set an example for us. Now, in the, again, uh, uh, from verse 12 to 14, it says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on that day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I'm glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. So when we look from 12 to 17, what is God? In the middle, we have him as an example. In the first preceding verses, he calls for unity of Christians. And in this, from verse 12 to 14, he calls us to a life of holiness. He calls us to a life of holiness. Now, when we look at verse 5 to 11, when we read, we begin to see that he considers equality with something to be used to his own advantage. That is what we do, don't we? This, that's the implication that if not for Christ, what we do is we, in our privileges, what we do is we use it to our own advantage. It is impossible for us when we use our privileges as an advantage, it is impossible for us to be humble, but we will take pride, we will seek recognition. And therefore, in the light of this, what, what we see here is we begin to see that if we are left to ourselves, it is impossible for us to live out that life. Humility just doesn't come easily. It is impossible to work that out in our own flesh. It is impossible to work that out in our own flesh. What is foundational is our relationship with God. That is foundational because without God, it is impossible to love one another. Now, when we look at this Trinity, when we looked at, we looked at God the Father, we looked at God the Son, now, there is another person in that Trinity, and that is God, the Holy Spirit. Now, when we look at uh, uh, what, is the, what is the mark of a Christian, what is the identity mark of a Christian, when we look at it, the identity mark of a Christian is we are filled by the Holy Spirit. We are filled by the Holy Spirit. That is the identity mark of a Christian. So when you look at that, you begin to see that we are always in that relationship with the Trinity. We are always in that relationship with God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now when we look at our lives, you know, sometimes 
We all seek comfort, we all seek convenience in life, we all seek privileges in life, and when we do that, sometimes God becomes very far from us. God becomes very far from us, and so God does, we feel like God does not, you know, uh, uh, does not engage in our everyday life. But here, in, in this, he says that God has given us Jesus he said, wait for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And that outpouring of the Holy Spirit was the mark and identity of a Christian. When we look at the book of Acts, we begin to see that when um, um, Paul, uh, no, it was not Paul, Peter, Peter, the, uh, the, Uh, what do you call? They thought that God was only for the Jews. They thought that God was only for the Jews. And so they all had this, during the Pentecostal, they all had the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But all the while, they thought that it was only for the Jews. But we, uh, I believe every one of us are aware that, you know, Peter had a vision, had a kind of trance, and he saw all these, you know, uh, um, animals, dirty animals, you know, he saw it all, and he thought, uh, God said, kill and eat. And he said, no, I'm not going to eat that. How can I eat that? I, all my life I've never eaten it. It's impossible for me to eat that. Again, that comes again. And he says, no, I'm not going to eat. Three times. And then Cornelius comes. Cornelius takes him to his house. He goes there. And what happens? As he preaches, as he speaks the word of God, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And so Peter says, if God has given them the spirit, who am I? Who am I to reject them? And therefore, if the identity mark of a Christian was the giving out of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, we have that Holy Spirit within us. And therefore, what I want to try, uh, what I'm trying to say is, God is not so far away from us. God is with us, and it is this Holy Spirit that lives within us, that guides us, that leads us, and it is only in the power of that Holy Spirit, only when we are in a relationship with God, with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, when we have that relationship with God then we are able to love one another because loving one another is a supernatural kind of life. We cannot live it out in the flesh. It can only be in God. And that is what here Paul is trying to tell us is this. If you are to love one another, if we are to love one another, we cannot do it if not apart from God. And therefore, when it says love one another, it always comes in the context of, I have given you a new law. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. We cannot separate these two. It always stays together. Now, many a times what people do is, when you separate this, when you separate the love of God and love for one another, what usually happens is you get into this kind of relationship where you think that God is only for you and you know you don't, you, you don't associate with people, but you think that God is only for you and you leave that individualistic kind of Christian where you say it is only between me and God. The other category can be when you leave out God and you engage in that loving one another, you get into all the social responsibilities, but without God. And so in, in our call to, to experience God together in our relationship, it has always, we always have to come back to this relationship with God. Apart from that, it is impossible for us to love one another. It is only when we have this relationship with God. And even this evening, I don't want to take it for granted. I don't want to take it for granted that all of us are enjoying that relationship with God. We are in a love relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. To many of us Christians, the, 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 the doctrine of Trinity remains a dogma an abstract belief that it has nothing to do with our lives. But it is not so. It is so practical. It lives with us. And God calls us to be in that relationship. And so he says, remain in me. 
I am the vine. If you are out of this fellowship with God, or if we are not experiencing God in that way, it is impossible for us to love one another. That is what I am trying to say. So in this community, if we together we are to experience God, all of us, all of us seated here, as we say we are Christians, as the Holy Spirit lives within us, and as we fellowship with God daily in our lives, as we engage and we say, this Shema is my life. I center my life around this Shema where I love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, with all my mind. When we come in that, in that place, when we worship God in that place, it is then that love will flow out of it. Love will never flow apart from our relationship with God. And so to experience God together in relationship, we need to be in a relationship with God. That only then can we take the posture of a servant and serve one another. If not, it is impossible. It is impossible. We know that when we look at the, we look, when we look at the stories in the Bible, we look at the Pharisees. They got their life together, their religious life. It was in order until Jesus Christ came in the picture. And when Christ came in the picture, it exposed all their hypocrisy. It exposed all their hypocrisy that they wanted Jesus' death. They wanted him dead. And so it is with our lives. When things are well, when there's no challenge or uh, th there's nothing confronting our lives, we can live lives like we are humble people. But when things come to us and we're not in a relationship with God, the flesh can come about. The religious, all of this will be exposed. It is impossible to live, to love one another apart from Christ. Now, what is love in that sense? What is love? Love is the intention to do good. Love is always the intention to do good. It is to do good. God is good. God is good. And that is why God always longs for the good of others, for the good of us. It is always the intention is always to do good. And so we, if we have to bring ourselves in, in the light of this, love yourself Love your neighbors as you love yourself. How do we love ourselves? We also need to love ourselves in the sense when we define good in that sense, it is the intention to do good. Love is the intention to do good. Then we have to bring ourselves there where we give ourselves to say, I want, I want to do, I want life to be good to me. But And so what, what usually happens is it is always we... The, the word love has been betrayed so much that for everything we use the word, I love, I love, I love, and we get, we get lost at it. Because uh, uh, I say, I love ice cream, and what do I do with it? I consume it, I eat it. So that's a desire. So it is so important in our own lives to come before God and say, yes, I want good I want to love myself. I want good to be done in my own life. And when we bring ourselves before God, God will straighten our desires. He will be able to, he will be able to filter what we love, what is good, and what is desire. And as that happens, we will be able to accept and we will be able to love others, always intending good for the other person, always seeing to it that that person achieves the fullness of Christ's light in that person. It will always, we will always move in that direction. And that is, and that is why when we are to do experience together in relationships, it can never be apart from Christ. We can never love one another with our strength. We will fail. And so my um, plea to all of us, or my urge to all of us, or for us to reflect is, what is your relationship with God? Your personal relationship with God. 
If not, it is impossible for us to love one another. Love is the intention to do good. We seek the good in others. It is always the good in others. And therefore, when we come together as God's people, looking at Christ, the God-man, and imitating him when we look at him and we strip off, like, like it's mentioned, we strip off all our privileges, but we look forward to serve one another by fulfilling all the responsibilities that comes along with it. And what God asks of us is to reflect him in this world. We are to reflect him. And so God moves us. He used he, he, he is an example to us. He lived that life. He called us into this life. He calls us into this life. And he tells us that it is in me when you, put, when you have this relationship with me, then what happens is when we have this relationship with him, then we become like stars in the world. We are the bodily presence of Jesus Christ in this world. And so he says, when we love one another, when we are rooted in God and we love one another, what happens is we become the living or the bodily presence of God in our life. So when people look at us, people know that we are Christians. There is only one way that people know will know that we are Christians. And the Bible says they will know we are Christians by our love for one another by our love for one another where we intend to do good to one another and for that we need to have the posture of a slave or of a servant that serves one another knowing that we are serving God so when we look at the you know like all this when we look at the letters of Paul Every time when Paul starts the letter, it is always, he always starts by giving thanks to God, by what we have in God, the indicative of what we have, the riches that we have in Christ, the kind of relationship that we have in Christ. And it is always in the light of that he gives the imperative, therefore, love one another. It is always the indicative that comes that is followed by the imperative. And therefore, it is so necessary for us to be rooted, to be rooted in, in God. If we are to love one another, again I'm saying, but if we are to love one another, we need to find our place in God. We need to be in a relationship with God to be able to love one another. I'm getting so lost, but I would want to, uh, you know, uh, try to bring this together and end this here. But in all of this, what I am trying to say is this. We all need to recapture, we need to recapture the wonder of the gospel. Every day of our lives, we need to come before God and we need to be recaptured by the wonder of the gospel. That it is because of Christ that it is because of Christ I am who I am. And I think we need to really work this out in our lives. I am who I am because of Christ. Tim Keller, in one of his, uh, this thing, uses this analogy. That when we drop, when we drop a coin in a coffee machine, what happens is all, once the coin is dropped, then coffee comes out, isn't it? But many a times, it gets stuck. It gets stuck, and we have to pound it, pound it over and over again so that the, we, we hear that cling, you know, uh, the, 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 the coin dropping, and then there is coffee in that cup. And so he says, many of our lives are like this. We are always found in that middle. The gospel has gone in, but it has not come out in our character. It is not seen in our character. 
And therefore, again, I ask, especially this group of leaders, as much as I'm lost, you know, in my days, but I want to bring this across to all of us, that we need to be in a love relationship with God. We need to recapture the wonder of the gospel. Many a times with our mouth, we say, yes, I believe in Christ. I believe in Christ. I know that he died for me. I know I'm saved by grace. But when we live out our lives in, you know, in practice, we don't see that. We live our lives like the way we want to. What we say, we never do. But once we give ourselves fully to this love, to, to, to this relationship with God. And every day as we begin our day, we thank God for, our, for what Christ has done for us. I think our lives will be beautiful and we will be able to love one another. And so he says, in the light of this, I just want to end here. It says, verse 9 to 11, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yes, Christ came. Yes, Christ was obedient unto death. Yes, Christ took the form of a servant. But in all of this, Christ is coming again in all of his glory that when we see Christ every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord we serve a living God we serve the king and God calls us and so I was using the temple analogy and I lost it but I want to bring this together and I want to say this yes the kingdom of God existed in eternity they were in a relationship Christ, God extended that relationship to human beings. Humans had this perfect relationship with God. All throughout the ages, God spoke to men. Men built altars, but God was always in relationship with God. God lived in tents. God lived in the, he, he lived with people and he was in a relationship with God. God was in the temple. He was in a relationship with God. Christ came and it is in Christ Christ also takes the form of a temple. He tabernacled amongst us. And Christ, in Christ, we had this relationship with God. The Holy Spirit came and there was this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so this Holy Spirit lives in us. And so we are the temples. Christ lives. And so in, in no time in the history of man did God leave us ever. God was always with us, desiring a relationship with us. And today we have this relationship. We have, we live, the Holy Spirit lives within us. The Spirit of Christ that lives in us, and this Spirit of Christ that lives in us gave us a prayer to pray, Abba, Abba, Father. And to even say Father to God in, in, in the Jewish context, you and I can be crucified by just calling God our Father. It was impossible to God to call God Father. But Christ, the Spirit of Christ that lives in us, gave us these utterances to call God Abba, just like Jesus Christ called Abba. We have the access to Abba. And therefore, we come to God in prayer every day of our lives. We have this relationship with God and we live this out. And then Christ is coming again to live with us. And, and so in, in the book of Revelation, we see that there is no temple. Why? Because God comes down to live amongst us. And there is no temple because the presence of God, we will see God face to face and we will live in his presence forever. This relationship that started before eternity, it will go on forever. God calls us into this relationship and we will forever be in that relationship with God. And so in this time till Christ comes again, let us take this upon ourselves as we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, as we say that yes, we live for God, Yes, we are a community of believers. We believe in Christ and we have the Holy Spirit in us as God's people. Let us unitedly work towards holiness, towards holiness, towards the good of others and in our lives and through our lives as we live for the good of others in a relationship with one another. As the word of God says, may we shine like stars that people may know that we are Christians, that God 
is with us and true in and through this just living out our lives loving one another people will be drawn people will be drawn to god may we live it out through our lives this is my prayer for all of us and so um like i said yes we are in the christian faith many of us may be saying that i am this much old this much old but i believe but i pray that the wonder of the gospel the wonder of that gospel may we recapture it may we make it a part of our lives and in the light of that in loving god may we love one another shall we look to god in prayer Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for, O oh Lord, you are great. Thank you. that you call us into this relationship, Lord, with you. Thank you, O oh Lord. I pray, Lord, as your people and as your children, Lord, may we, O oh Lord Jesus, may we, O oh Lord, in you, O oh Lord, desire Lord to love you with our all to love you with our all Lord and serve you joyfully and serve one another because in your word you say Lord when we serve one another know that we are serving you Lord so Lord we pray that in and through our lives Lord we will continue to live for you and bring glory and honor to your name. So Lord, we give ourselves to you and we pray, O oh Lord, that you will continue to work in our lives, Lord, and bless us, O oh Lord Jesus. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, Lord, the joy of our salvation, Lord. And in that joy, may we serve you, Lord. Thank you once again for this time. For we offer this prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your patient listening. Shall we all rise and sing, make me a blessing. We will sing only the first and the third verse. Out in the highways and byways of life, many are weary and sad, carried a sunshine where darkness is right, making the sorrowing glad. Even to you in your need, 
love as the master of you. Be to the helpless a helper indeed. Unto your mission be true. Make me a blessing. Make me a blessing out of my life. May Jesus shine. Make me a blessing. Take your seat. Aloy Shea. Once again, Aloy Shea. I think some people. Sitting at the back are shouting Aguni. <laughs> Aguni is heavenly language, uh, earthly and physical language. So Aloshe is heavenly language. So we cannot mix Aguni with Aloshe. Before coming to my note of appreciation, on behalf of the office, NPC officers, on behalf of Dr. Asedole, the president, and also my co-president, Dr. Nihole, we would like to express our gratitude to our China secretary, Dr. Keho, NPCC staff, EC members, and all the council members for giving the opportunity to three of us to serve the council as NPCC officers. Nagaland Baptist Church Council, 23rd Triennial and 87th Annual Gathering began with the presence of God. Everything went well with the help of God, and tonight we successfully conclude with thanksgiving to God. I take this stage on behalf of the NPCC to acknowledge and appreciate the people who tirelessly rendered who have tirelessly rendered their service towards the celebration of 23rd Triennial and 87th Annual Gathering. To be a hosted NPCC gathering is not a burden, I feel, but it is a blessing for the host community. I, on behalf of the office, I deeply express our heartfelt gratitude to the leadership of Reverend Dr. Bodu Sima, the Executive Secretary of Western Sumi Baptist Akokoho Kokalo Kokakolo, and all his team members for their love, commitment, dedication, generosity, and hospitality they have shown to all the delegates coming from various parts of Nagaland. Shall we give them a round of applause? <laughs> Thank you so much for your hospitality. And also your hospitality and then your smile have met us. Happy to stay here in this beautiful land, gold, new land, which means our land. We were in our land. 
One day, an old man was invited to a party. The food was ready on the table. Everything was ready. So he said, Idea bishi hoshio. Idea bishi hoshio. So everybody was surprised what this old man is talking about. And then he meant to say that your food items. Yeah. Varieties of food. Variety of food. You have prepared yeah, a variety of food. Idea bishi hoshio. So he forgot the food items and he was mentioning idea bishi hoshio. We'd like to express our special thanks to our cooking team under the leadership of Diplo SPA Kim. We really enjoyed your delicious food, breakfast, etc., etc. You know, when I came here, my weight was only 57. But your delicious food has, food has put on my weight to 70. <laughs> really, I'm heavier than before now. I gained my weight, and I'm so happy to go back. I believe I will not get sick now. The office also like to express our special gratitude and thanks to all the speakers, resource persons, who have powerfully shared the word of God during this gathering. Not forgetting all the participants who have taken part during the gathering, may the Lord God bless you all. We do like to deeply express our heartfelt gratitude for presenting beautiful, beautiful songs led by the NPCC Triennial Choir. May God bless you all, and God will be always with you. Our special thank goes to all the volunteers and stewards who have tirelessly worked hard to make this 23rd and 87th annual gathering a grand success. Finally, our note of appreciation will not be complete if we do not express our thankfulness to the Sumi Western, uh, Sumi Baptist Akokoho Newland, Sumi Baptist Church Newland. Thank you so much for your loving kindness, generosity, and hospitality. I, we believe that. God will be always with this church and in this land. The NPCC has begun her journey already by experiencing God together throughout this gathering. We hope and pray that this year our journey will be more of a more of God's blessing and a spiritual maturity. God's blessings are always meant to protect us, to guide us and to lead us to the path of righteousness and to give us a hope. Long live NPCC, Nagaland Baptist Church Council, and also God bless the leadership of WSBAK. Thank you so much for your beautiful gifts given to us. May the good Lord bless the people of this land, and also this land, and a land of diversity. May God bless you all. Thank you so much. We will continue with our acknowledgement. But I will pick up uh, from where uh, our vice president has left. And uh, this is going to be an exercise for us because in two months' time or less, we are going to be hearing the sound all over the mountaintops, the valleys, the plain, 
and as uh, we walk through the jungle. From my left, the two rows of, this is my left or right? No, this is my right. <laughs> why, why are you talking? <laughs> On my right, the two rows, and then uh, the front row here on my left, we are going to be uh, echoing each other uh, with uh, the song that they sang uh, this uh, morning, Kasho uh, Papu. <laughs> so you will say Kasho Papu, and then you will uh, follow them, okay? Okay? One, two, go. Hey, not coming out well. <laughs> it has to be like this. Kasho papu. Kasho papu. Yeah, not, not, not kasho papu. Your dinner is canceled. Kasho papu. One, two, go. Faster. <laughs> right. Yeah. In less than two months' time, we'll be hearing that sound in the jungles, right? Kasho papu, kasho papu. And when you remember, remember new land. Yeah. We want to acknowledge uh, our um, outgoing officials. We have uh, uh, given them a farewell and also a farewell uh, prayer, bless them. But uh, on uh, behalf of uh, the Nagaland Baptist Church Council, we want to uh, acknowledge you with a commendation. And uh, along with that, uh, we also have uh, one of our executive uh, secretary uh, leaving uh, already. Uh, he has handed over uh, the um, uh, leadership responsibility from the KBBB, uh, Konyak uh, Baptist Bumenok Bangjum, or Bangjum Bumenok, whichever way. Uh, uh. So uh, uh, we want to uh, give a commendation for his leadership and appreciation uh, as uh, a leader of uh, the association and also member of uh, the executive uh, council for uh, the past uh, 15 uh, years. Along with that, we also have uh, the host church, Sumi Baptist Akukuhu, uh, Newland, and uh, the host uh, association, Western uh, Western uh, Sumi Baptist uh, Akukuhu Kakagulu. Uh, so uh, the six of them will be acknowledged, but I want to call uh, the, uh, uh, our officials, uh, the President, Reverend Dr. Uh, Atsi, the Vice uh, President, uh, Tialemba, and the, vice, the second Vice President, uh, Dr. Niholi, to please come over here. These brothers and uh, sisters, they have served uh, MBCC for the last uh, three years. They have done well. They have led the council well with integrity. And uh, <coughs> as uh, they leave, we want to acknowledge them. I want to give uh, to, uh, you know, I'm a gentleman, to the lady first. Yeah. Certificate of Commendation. The Nagaland Baptist Church Council is pleased to place on, its, on record its deep appreciation for the services of Dr. A. Niholi Sema, 
rendered to the building of the kingdom of God through the life and ministry of the Nagaland Baptist Church Council from 2021 to 2024 in the capacity of uh, the vice president and executive committee member of the council, a faithful servant of God. We shall remember you always with fond memories of the fellowship and friendship we shared together. May God continue to bless you to be his worthy ambassador, touching the lives of many to experience the fullness of life in Jesus Christ. On behalf of the Council, signed Reverend Dr. Zilhu Keho, General Secretary, NBCC. President, Certificate of Commendation. The Nagaland Baptist Church Council <coughs> is pleased to place on record its deep appreciation of the services of Reverend Dr. V. C. Dole, rendered to the building of the Kingdom of God through the life and ministry of the Nagaland Baptist Church Council from 2021-2024 in the capacity of the president and executive committee member of the council, a faithful servant of God. We shall remember you always with fond memory of the fellowship and friendship we share together. May God continue to bless you to be his worthy ambassador, touching the lives of many to experience the fullness of life in Jesus Christ. On behalf of the Council, signed Reverend Dr. Zezu Kehyo, General Secretary. <laughs> to Mr. Kialem Bapong. Certificate of Commendation. The Nagaland Baptist Church Council is pleased to place on record its deep appreciation of the services of Mr. Kialamba Hong, rendered to, to the building of the Kingdom of God through the life and ministry of the Nagaland Baptist Church Council from 2021-2024. In the capacity of the Vice President an executive committee member of the council, a faithful servant of God, we shall remember you always with fond memories of the fellowship and friendship we share together. May God continue to bless you to be his worthy ambassador, touching the lives of many to experience the fullness of life in Jesus Christ. On behalf of the council, signed Reverend Dr. Zelhu Keho, General Secretary. Reverend Chemyu. It's not here. Would you uh, please uh, come and uh, I know you will do a good job <laughs> of uh, delivering uh, this uh, commendation. In order to save uh, the time, I will not uh, read it, but as you hand over this, please read it to him. <laughs> wording is the same. Yeah. 
This commendation is for the host church. If uh, the pastor is here, uh, I will ask him uh, to come and uh, receive the commendation. Certificate of Appreciation. The Nagaland Baptist Church Council presents this certificate to the host church, Sumi Baptist <coughs> Akukuhu Newland, in deep appreciation of your outstanding dedication and commitment in hosting Nagaland Baptist Church Council 23rd Trinal and 87th annual gathering, February 1 to 4, 2024, on the theme, Experiencing God Together. A dedicated service rendered to the council shall be remembered with fond memories of the fellowship and friendship we shared together. May God continue to bless you to be his worthy ambassador touching the lives of many to experience the fullness of life in Jesus Christ. Signed, Reverend Dr. Zelu Kehyo, General Secretary. Signed, Reverend Dr. Viatsi Tole, President. This is to Western Sumi Baptist Akukuhu Kakaklu, the Blue SBAK, and uh, may I ask one of the representatives, their leader, to come and uh, receive the commendation. Certificate of Appreciation. The Nagaland Baptist Church Council presents this certificate to the host association. Western Sumi Baptist Akukuhu Kakakulu. The Blue SBAK, in a deep appreciation of your outstanding dedication and commitment in hosting Nagaland Baptist Church Council 23rd Trinal and 87th Annual Gathering, February 1 to 4, 2024, on the theme experiencing God together. A dedicated service rendered to the council shall be remembered with fond memories of the fellowship and friendship we share together. May God continue to bless you to be his worthy ambassador, touching the lives of many to experience the fullness of life in Jesus Christ. Signed, Reverend Dr. Zephu Kehyo, General Secretary. Signed, Reverend Dr. Via Sidole, President. And now, as uh, we are about uh, to come to a close, we will hand over the NBCC flag that will be received from uh, the host association to Pocheri Baptist, <coughs> Baptist Church Council, who will be hosting our 88th annual gathering, that is 2025. So may I ask? the flag to be brought, and uh, Pocheri Executive uh, Secretary, my younger brother, to please come up.
so that you can prepare to welcome the delegates of the Magellan Baptist Church Council for the 88th annual gathering in your association 2025. <laughs> Those who eat well can smile well.
May I ask the congregation to kindly stand? And let us pray. Gracious God, our loving Heavenly Father, we truly knew that it was in your will that you had brought us together. And we joyfully give all glory and honor to you alone for your love, mercy, and grace, and for your blessings upon us in abundance. As the triennial and the annual catering of the MBCC comes to an end tonight, from the bottom of our hearts, we humbly acknowledge your presence in all our activities and we want to thank you God for speaking to us through different participation. Our commitments have been enriched. We have tried to make our relationship stronger with one another and we have made a promise before you to give our best for the ministry of the living God. May you help us so that your children, we the men and women that you have called us, will keep on experiencing God's presence in togetherness for your glory here on earth. We want to thank you especially for the life and the ministry of NPCC, the associations, and all the local churches in Nagaland and beyond. Bless us all together. Tonight, we also want to pray especially for the WSPK, for the wonderful generous, loving ministry that they have extended to us during our stay here. Bless them abundantly, O God. To this end, even as we plan to leave this place tonight and tomorrow, may you be gracious in our journeys ahead of us. And now, May the grace of Christ our Savior and the Father's bondless love with the Holy Spirit's favor rest upon us from above now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. 